morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Abiding Faith Christian Center Sunday Bible Class. Pastor Rodney and I are so glad that you decided to join us today for a study in the Word about faith. We're on in our Sunday Bible class. We're going through a book, Bible Faith Study Course, uh, by Kenneth Hagen, man of great faith, and uh, was able to teach many others about faith. So that's what we're going through. So are you ready today? What I want you to do, those of you that are uh, watching on Facebook Live, go ahead and hit the share button so that you can hear, uh, I mean, so that others can hear the word of God on this morning and join in. So go ahead and hit that share button. And uh, those of you uh, also that are watching, get your Bible, your iPad, or uh, however you uh, look at the word of God. Look at that and get your, uh, get your Bible out. I'm sorry, I'm trying to do my share on here. Get your Bible out and go ahead so you can uh, look at the word because by, uh, Abiding Faith Christian Center is a church where you are going to hear the word of God because we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that's why we share the word. At Abiding Faith Christian Center, the word is what, what's going to cause you to stand. Good morning, good morning to those that are signing on right now. Well, we're going to go ahead and get into the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, last week, uh, we ended up in the section uh, on page 16 uh, talking about hope versus faith in the prayer of agreement and so we discussed that and i'm just going to do a little bit so that we can move on in the lesson and what i want you to do is go back and listen to the prior lessons so that you can be caught up with us to know what we're doing but don't do it right now do it when we get done or do it after the 11:30 service on today so uh, listen, hope versus faith in the prayer of agreement, which we found out that hope and faith are two different things, but they work simultaneously uh, with each other. Hope, let me um, uh, give you the meaning of hope. Hope, one of the scriptures uh, in hope, it says, uh, uh, Psalm 42 and 5 in the Amplified, why are you in despair, or, uh, O my soul, and when are you... Uh, restless and disturbed within me hope thou in God and wait patiently for him for I shall again praise him the help of my countenance and my God so hope is the future faith is right now Amen. okay and uh, you know in uh, uh, Hebrews where it talks about uh, faith um, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. The things that we hope for, we believe God that it will come to pass because it lines up with the word of God. Amen? So that's why we can have faith and then hope for the future. Okay, they work together. You don't want hope by yourself. Amen. Because if you just have hope by yourself without any uh, promise that is going to come to pass, then that's when you become uh, despondent and frustrated about the things that you are believing God for when you just have hope alone. We must know that we know that we know that when we pray, God hears us. Amen. And, and uh, a good thing for you to do, if you go back and listen to Saturday prayer lesson, you will also find out more about that, about prayer and about God hearing us. Amen. Amen. So that's just a little uh, uh, of what uh, hope and faith is so that we can, know the difference it's so important it's so important when i was going through this lesson it just reminded me and it refreshed my mind of how these have to work together amen let's turn to uh, uh hebrews so that you can look at as pastor say so that you can lay your eyes on this scripture <laughs> amen hebrews uh, uh 11 and 1 Hebrews 11 and 1. 
Amen. And it is a good thing to lay your eyes on the word of God. Because you don't have to go by what I told you. You can go by what you saw yourself and believe it. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you see, now faith is the substance. Faith is right now. Amen. Right now. Hope is the future. Yes. Okay? So when you pray, you believe that God hears you right now. Amen? Amen? And that he has answered right now. Amen. Because it's already done. What Jesus came to do for our salvation, our healing, our deliverance, our ability to prosper, all of that is already done, and he's seated on the right hand of the Father. Hey, I, I say, in other words, okay, I'm finished. Y'all do it. <laughs> Y'all carry on. I've done what I'm supposed to do. I left you what you needed, and that was the word of God. So come on, children. Let's do what God has called us to do. We're God's children. That's why I said children. We're God's children. So he's saying, come on and let's do what I have called you to do. Amen. Amen. Come on and let's believe the things that I told you are true and real. And if you pray that he hears you, let's be people that walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what you call a believer. That's what we call ourselves, believers. And what do believers do? Believe. believe. Believers believe. Amen. <laughs> Amen. When you say you're a believer, this is what I want to know. What are you believing in? Are you believing in what the word says? Oh, my goodness. When God could find no other man to do what Jesus did, well, when he could find no other man that could save us, amen, he sent Jesus amen. for us, amen. amen, to save, heal, deliver, set free, yes. uh, cause us to prosper. He said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. He want every part of us to be prosperous. Amen in our body, in our mind, our will, our emotions, and definitely spiritually. He wants us to be prosperous. He wants us to walk in victory. He said this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. If you want to be an overcomer, you are going to have to walk by faith. And the way that we do that is by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Consistently hearing. Amen. Hallelujah. As pastor says, a little dab of do you, which a lot of y'all young folk probably have no clue what he's talking about. Because <laughs> that was way back. <laughs> Even before his time, that was the Brill Cream, the Brill Cream, Brill Cream, which was not necessarily uh, for us. <laughs> Amen. It depends on the hair type. Amen. Amen. So uh, we need to uh, get in the word of God daily. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The word is life. There is life in the word of God. You want real life? Get in the word of God. Amen. Oh, my goodness. The word of God. Oh, geez. I don't know where I will be today without the word. Oh, my gosh. Not just long time ago. Today. I don't know where I would be without the word of God when the, when the enemy tries to come against your mind and different things, different attacks in your mind of the different things that you deal with here on earth. We need to have the word of God to fight back the attacks of the enemy. Amen. Because I, I was just uh, listening to it. I had heard this before. You know how you can, you have faith in your heart, but you got to deal with that mind. And if you don't deal with that mind, that unbelief is going to end up in your heart. 
So you got to deal with that mind first. You already got it in your heart. Then deal with that mind so that it doesn't go down to your heart. Don't start believing the lies of the enemy. And anything that doesn't match up with the word of God is a lie. Hallelujah. Because his word is truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we are in Sunday school. If you have any uh, comments, be sure to come to the mic. Okay, so anyway, last week we talked about uh, one lady who needed prayer for a certain amount of money. And we kind of got uh, almost near the end of that. And he was asking her specifics. We're on page 16. He was asking her specifically what you wanted. And it's good to be specific. And one of the reasons, so you know when uh, the manifestation of that prayer has come. And that's important because it helps you when the next trial comes or when the enemy tries to tell you that God's promises are not going to come to pass in your life. You can look back and look at what God has done before. And he's a God that never changes. Hallelujah. What he's done before, he'll do it again when it lines up with the word of God. That's the thing. We got to make sure our prayers are in accordance with the word, that it lines up with the word of God. We're going to get into that a little bit more uh, later. So anyway, he prayed for her about the money, and then uh, he asked her a question afterwards. He said, is it done, sister? And she said, Brother Hagen, I sure hope it is. I hope so. Does that sound like she believed? No. She wasn't sure. And do you know, the de I'm going I'm I'm to say it in this way, the devil would tear your head up when you don't know for sure. <laughs> you better know for sure because he will box on your mind when you don't know for sure that when somebody prayed for you or when you prayed for yourself according to the word of God you better know for sure and you know what just say it right after it yes thank you Lord that I, I believe that I received what you said in your word hallelujah Say it right after it and keep saying it because he's going to come back. Okay, I, I, I know you uh, said that. I know you prayed that, but look, that's what he'll try to do. And you know what? When he say, look, let's look. look let's look up or either down to the word. Mm -mm. All of God's promises are yes and amen. The devil is a liar and he's the father of lies. Glory to God. He's a deceiver. He tries to get us to not trust in the Lord because he knows how powerful and mighty that we'll be in the earth if we just trust God and trust his word. He knows how powerful we'll be with impacting others' lives when we walk by faith and not by sight, when we walk in the word of God, when we walk even though we don't actually see the actual manifestation, but you still tell them, this is what I believe. You still quote the word of what God said. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. One of my things I quote uh, every day, <laughs> I don't know if I've missed a day, may have, but my, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Yes, they are blessed. The generation of the upright, they are blessed. That's, that's one of the things that I have to fight with. Amen. But I thank God that I know the word of God and that his promises are true. Hallelujah. I have to fight Hallelujah. the word of God when the enemy tries to come and say, uh-oh, did you feel that pain there? Uh-oh, look what's happening. And I tell him, oh, devil, you a lie. Name 19B, uh, 19B says this affliction shall not rise up a second time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By his stripes, I am healed. So shut up. That's what I tell him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he has to back off. Yes, with the word of God. Just like Jesus in the, in the garden. Jesus fought him off with the word. And, and when he first uh, tempted Jesus. Tried to tempt. Tried to tempt Jesus. Jesus said where well, he came back again. And see when he come back again. You can't say well it ain't gone. 
Hallelujah. Jesus did it three times. Three times he tried to tempt Jesus to do something that he wanted uh, uh, Jesus to do to appeal to his pride, his flesh, to appeal to that. And Jesus put the word on him and backed him off. And then he's, uh, you know what? Okay, this is my imagination. I'm letting y'all know. Hey, and then the devil life. Let me go. Let me go find something else because this right here ain't working. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's what the devil will do. He'll leave for a season. Yes. Now, the devil ain't with doing you up every day unless you are not in the word of God. Yes. Amen. He'll back off. Amen. Amen. But he coming back now. Yes. He coming back just like he did uh, with Jesus. But thank God we have on the whole armor of God. Thank God that we uh, can resist the devil and he will flee. Hey, the, the scripture says, submit yourselves unto God. Then you resist the devil and he will flee. He didn't say he might flee. He will flee. But you got to believe what it says. When, but when you submit, then he's going. That's what you got to do first. We can't just say, resist the devil, he'll flee. No, he said, you got to submit yourself first. Yes. Then you resist the devil, Amen. and he'll flee. Because he ain't thinking about your words. Right. He's thinking about God's words. Right. This the only thing. You know what? This word is the only thing that can back him off. You can say, Satan, I rebuke you all you want to, but if you don't put the word on it, hallelujah, he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yes, 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 hallelujah. So listen, uh, um, uh, and he, um, when she said, I hope so, he let her know. And you know what? Sometimes, well, not sometimes, all the time, we have to tell people the truth, but you have to do it in wisdom. Because you want them to uh, accept. That's why, that's why it's good to walk in the spirit Amen. and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's why it's, it's good to hear the Lord's voice. Because what Holy Spirit will do is lead you and guide you and give you the wisdom and what to say and how to say it where that person will receive it. And then even after that, if they reject it, don't you know that God knows how to bring it back to their remembrance when they step out of your presence? Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. So be willing to tell the truth in love. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Be led by the spirit of God. And he replied, this is the reply. It said, well, then it's not. It isn't because we didn't agree. So when you ask somebody to pray for you, they're getting in, they're praying for you and you need to get an agreement with them because that's what he had told her. He said, let me pray. And you just, in essence, you just get an agreement with what I say. Okay. Cause he was praying the word. All right. Got to stipulate that. So, uh, when she said, I hope so, that means that they weren't in agreement because he agreed his prayer was, this is going to happen. And I'm paraphrasing it, that you will get the $100 that you want. Okay, that was his prayer, and that's what he believed for. And in the prayer of agreement, you have to agree in order for it to happen for you. Amen. So anyway, he let her know because she didn't agree. She, she was hoping and praying. Okay. Cause she said, you know, she hoped so. And whereas, whereas when somebody pray, as I said, the prayer of agreement with you, just say, I receive it in Jesus name. I believe it in Jesus name. Go ahead, pastor. Can you go to the mic so they can, uh, it, it's not, it don't, it don't sound well, sir. Yeah. I was just thinking because, um, <laughs> reading them my book my my uh sunday bible class book and he said she was hoping but he says i'm i'm believing but you're hoping and i'm believing right the difference right you're not in agreement i'm believing and you're hoping so i believe that we receive when we pray and you're hoping well i'm hoping that it's going to be done even though we pray uh -huh. so that too right there it doesn't agree it's kind of like having you know okay i want you to i want you to uh, repeat the same thing that I say 
and so this one person says this, and then the other person says some, something else mm -hmm. similar to it, but not exactly what they said. Uh -huh. And they're still not saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what agreement is. It's right. saying the same thing. That's it's good. It's believing the same yes, thing. Yes, so yes. I want to put that in there. Amen. The Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And so he let her know that uh, uh, it's not happening because uh, he told her, like Pastor said, you are hoping and... Um, I am believing. So it wasn't any agreement there. Yes. And that's what we need when we when you want somebody to agree with you in prayer. Amen. Amen. And that's the reason why sometimes that our prayers are not some of our prayers are uh don't work for us. Uh and it says on page 17, if our prayers don't work, it isn't God's fault because God never fails. If our prayers don't work, it is not Jesus' fault because Jesus never fails. God doesn't change. He's the same. That's something you can always count on. He is consistent. He doesn't change. He's not wishy-washy. Amen? He doesn't change. So, and, and prayer doesn't change God because he's already done it. He said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he's already done it. He's not changing. The word is not changing. So that's why when we pray, we believe that we receive when we pray. Because we know that God is not a God that he changes. He said, I'm God and I change not. The word, uh-huh. I, I was looking in a book where he said, he says, Mm -hmm. That God doesn't change and prayer doesn't change because God is the same always. And then mm -hmm. he says in the book, it says, uh, prayer doesn't change God. Mm -hmm. Prayer changes circumstances. Yes, and we're going to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got there yet. <laughs> but pastor's right. Amen. Since he uh, brought it up and said it. It's, uh, uh just to remind you that God doesn't change. And we go on down, and prayer doesn't change God. Prayer changes circumstances. Isn't that a revelation? Amen. That prayer doesn't change God? Because it's, his, his word is settled in heaven. Yes. It's settled forever. And when we pray, we pray according to the word, so we know that it's already done. So prayer changes the circumstances. That's why we pray, because we want circumstances to change in our life. It doesn't change God, because God is the same. Yesterday, as I said before, today and forever. The word is the same. He's always the same. That means that he is always faithful to his word. Amen. If he never changes, he is always faithful to his word. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And we can trust it. Look at Hebrews 10, 23. Hebrews 10, 23. Hebrews 10:23. This is this is one of my daily confessions. Hebrews 10:23. And yes, I got them wrote down. I have it a sheet on my door in my uh, office at home. I got a bunch of sheets on my door. The confessions that I make. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of them on the glass uh, uh pastor it started it on the glass in the bathroom. So you can see the scriptures and be reminded of the word of God. Amen. I even got one in my uh, car. That I pull out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> right down in the thing. Amen. Let's look. You want to say something pastor? I'm sorry. No I'm just saying we have it on the refrigerator. Yes on the refrigerator. Yes. Yes. So uh, hey. If that's what you need to do. Then put those scriptures up, and I, I suggest that's what you need to do. Amen. Amen. <laughs> need to do it so you can be reminded of it. Because it's getting, uh, sometimes in the busyness of life, it's not that we mean to forget, but we get busy, and we go and do what we have to do. And this, when you put it up, it reminds you, because you got to go in the bathroom and wash your face and, you know, 
do all that in the bathroom, you know, your, your morning routine or night routine also. Uh, you have to do that. Yeah, supposed to do that. <laughs> you have to do that. And it's right there to remind you. Or go to, hey, yep, you go to the refrigerator. You have to do that. <laughs> Put that word up before your eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. So look, uh, Hebrews, who? Okay. Hebrews 10, uh, uh, what did I say? Hebrews 10, uh, 10 23. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm looking. Oh, okay. How's Ray say that is not right, but I'm on the wrong column. Uh, 10, 23. It says, let's read this together so we'll know. Okay, let's go. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Amen. Let's be persistent in the word of God and in the promises of God and what you profess and don't back up off of it. Even though somebody may say, well, I thought you said this or I thought you said that. And I'm still saying it. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm going to say it until I leave here or until I see the manifestation. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and uh, uh, because he said, uh, I, I was looking at this, uh, prayer doesn't change God, but it changes our circumstances. But prayer, prayer changes circumstances, but prayer doesn't change God. Make sure if you don't see the manifestation today, tomorrow, or next week, that you don't back up off of it, okay? Don't, don't think that, okay, uh, well, uh, it didn't happen today, or it didn't happen uh, uh, um, two weeks from now. That don't, that's why you said, hold fast to what you're praying. Don't believe just because it didn't happen right then that it's not going to happen. Amen. We hold fast to the profession of our faith. We hold fast to the word of God, what the word says. Amen. Hallelujah. Because God is working. Hallelujah. And when I say God, the word is working. Oh, my goodness. He said, uh, uh, what, what did I say? He, so we read that. Let's look at uh, 13 and 8. 13 and 8. Whoo. Hebrews is such a uh, powerful book on faith. Amen. Hebrews 13 and 8. Okay. And we've, we've been talking about this. It says, Jesus Christ, the same. Somebody say same. same. The same yesterday and today and forever. So that means if something comes up out of the blue, because <laughs> things happen, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word has not changed. So you put the word on the, on the circumstance so the circumstance will change. Amen. So don't back up off of that. Let's look real quick at Romans 4, 20 through 21. Isn't the word good? Woo, hallelujah. I don't know about you all here and you all out there listening on Facebook or YouTube or however you listen listening. I tell you, I don't know where I would be without him. Hallelujah. <laughs> and if you don't know him, I tell you, you want to accept Jesus Christ and your as your Lord and your Savior so that you can have hope in this life. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're looking at Romans 4, 20 uh, through 21. And it says, and this is uh, talking about Abraham. Uh, just to remind you, Abraham, God promised Abraham a seed through Sarah. He tried to do it a different way, but thank God that he forgave him. Amen. <laughs> thank God. And it says that... Uh, in uh, 20, yeah, I said 20. So uh, God had promised him. He said, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He gave glory to God even before the manifestation. And you know 
that God is no respecter of persons. If he did it for Abraham, he will do it for us. Amen. Abraham was what? I forgot uh, how old, close to 100 years old when he had his first child. Y'all know that's a miracle, right? Amen. <laughs> and for Sarah, I think she was in her 90s. Is that right? Uh, I, I, this, I, it's not coming back to my mind, but it, she was past the year of bearing. Okay. And I'm sure Sarah's body went through the same process that our bodies go through as females. So it was shut down. You know what I'm saying? But oh, it got revved back up and she had a baby. <laughs> Amen. Both of them. And so he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. And that's what we have to be fully persuaded that what he had promised, God had promised, he was able also to perform it. Oh my goodness. Be fully persuaded about the promises of God. And I remind you, the only way that that's going to happen is if you stay in the word. We must saturate ourselves in the word of God. Don't let a day go by without laying your eyes on the word of God. It is our necessary food. And, and I, I say... Uh, especially the times that we're living in, which, you know, they had some rough days back then, but the times that we're living in, we see so many things happening. And if we're not, uh, if, if we're not aware, we we will allow ourselves to be overcome with all of the things this happened, pandemic happening, floods happening, tornadoes happening. Uh, 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 you may have stuff happening in your family, maybe death, may, all this stuff. If you're not careful, you'll get carried away with all those thoughts and you'll begin to uh, feel hopeless. Amen. But when you know the word of God, you know that we have hope. Hope thou in God. Glory to God. Amen. So that's what we want to do. We want to hope in God. Prayer changes our circumstances. And that's what we need to know. So that uh, 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 he uh, quoted uh, Lillian B. Yamas, and, and that, that was a mighty woman of God. And, and she said, if I, pray for, if I pray for any one thing, I pray for just one time for anything, and I don't get it, I start changing. In other words, when you begin to pray, make sure that your prayers are lining up with the word of God and that you're praying according to his will. And when you know that for sure, that that's what you're doing, don't back up off of it. Don't let anybody back you up off of it. When, you, when you've checked yourself, amen, because ain't nothing wrong with checking yourself. To make sure, okay, Lord, do I have any unforgiveness in my heart? Do, uh, is there anything that I uh, need to adjust or anything like that? It's always good to check ourselves. Amen. And once you've done that, you stand on that word of God until it comes to pass. And don't back up off of it. Amen. Uh, and uh, expect the manifestation. But it is important to make sure you look at yourself. Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah. I just wanted, I was just, uh, as I was listening to you and it came to me um i guess the lord revealed it to me said that uh that there's a definition of hope hope is a confident expectation of the fulfillment mm -hmm. of god's promise or the fulfillment of something because mm -hmm. you can have natural hope and you can have mm -hmm. biblical hope which is we're talking about biblical hope mm -hmm. and that hope that it talks about abraham who against hope uh Hopeless circumstance, utterly hopeless. Yes, yes. And the hopeless circumstances was, well, I know we're going to go under because if nobody's going to show up, we're way out here and, and nobody knows we're here, and so we're, we're going under. Right. That's, that's a hopeless. Right. Place. And then right. there's hope, mm -hmm. which is a confident expectation. Amen. Of the fulfillment of something. Well, that's that's a that's an expectation for the future. Yes. With faith. 
mm-hmm. is always present now. Mm-hmm. They says, right. I believe I have it now right. because God is not a man that he should lie, right. nor the son of man that he should that he should repent. Mm-hmm. And so the difference between faith and hope that we're looking at that because you know, uh, you're saying, uh, Dr. Lily Yeoman was saying that when she prayed one time mm-hmm. about something and it didn't come to pass, the first thing she does is go back and examine herself to see whether or not she's operating in hope or she's operating in faith. And mm-hmm. doesn't say right, right, that, right. But checking upon am I really mm-hmm. am I really believing correctly? Am I mm-hmm. hoping or am I in faith believing that I've received or my confession? Mm-hmm. Do I confess when I first start in my prayer and right. then two weeks from now has my confession changed? Right, like right. Uh-huh. I just wanted to share that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And Abraham uh, hoped in um, what God was going to do. Amen. What God actually did. But he had hope. But he had to have that. Those two things work together. Right, Pastor? Amen. You got to have them together. You can't have them alone. They have to work together. Amen. Because hope is seeing faith. As Pastor said, hope is seeing faith is right now. So faith has it right now and hope seeing it come to pass. Hope sees it come to pass. Am I correct when saying that? Yeah. Amen. So that, uh, that uh, yeah. Amen. You, you got something else you want to say? Well, I was just looking mm-hmm. inside the book for those who have the book. If you mm-hmm. uh, page 17. Where he talks about, he says, um, now don't misunderstand me. If you keep hope in the right place. Okay, that's coming later. Right, well, I know. <laughs> to explain this. So oh, okay. Will, yeah. You know, in the lesson right here, mm-hmm. I mean, um, faith and hope. Mm-hmm. Hope is, hope is, hope is what we, we desire. Mm-hmm. Hope is what we wish. Right. Now faith is the substance of things hoped hope for, for. We mm-hmm. desire for. We wish for. Mm-hmm. We long for. Right. But then faith, the word faith, mm-hmm. is the evidence or the proof mm-hmm. of the things we cannot perceive by right. the physical sense. Of the right. Things that we're hoping, wishing for. Right. It's 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 out there in in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in the in the place where you can't have a tangible touching to it, mm-hmm. but faith gives that substance to it. So right, they say, right. I believe I have it now, mm-hmm. not based upon the physical, but based upon what the right. God, says, God says I have it. Now. Right, so right. When we're talking about faith and hope mm-hmm. working together. Mm-hmm. You have to have a, a hope that is a confident expectation because. God's word says so, and faith right. is okay. I believe I have it now because God's word says what things are by desire. When I pray, right. I believe I receive it and I shall have them. Right. Therefore, I believe I have it now right. based upon the word. That's faith. Right, faith right. Says, yeah. well, praise God. God's word says it, and I know it's coming to pass. Praise right. God. Amen. 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 <laughs> right. Mm. Right, right. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, uh, this is what I suggest you do is uh, those of you who haven't heard the lessons before, go back and listen to the lessons and that'll help you even get a clearer picture of what we're talking about now because these lessons are building up on each other, okay? And so we're going to get into a, a little bit more about what Pastor was talking about on next week because our time is up. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, so anyway, you all, I, I tell you what, this word is good. Amen. Hallelujah. The word is good. And we walk by the word of God. Amen. And hey, we have faith in the word. And I always say the name of our church is Abiding Faith Christian Center. So we better be walking in faith. Amen. Hallelujah. And you may be out there listening today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you trying to understand what we're talking about when we talk about walking by faith. You may want to know all about that, but you get to know about it when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that's what you want to do. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You do not have to perish. You can have 
everlasting life. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you begin your walk in everlasting life. Amen. When you leave this earth, you'll step into glory and you won't step into hell. Amen. And that's what you want. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He made a way for us so that we would not have to spend eternity in hell. Heaven and hell is real. It's real. It's real. And hell is not a place where you're going to be partying and seeing your friends. Uh -uh, you're not going to be thinking about none of that. They're screaming and hollering and torment. And you may say, well, Pastor Pat, you trying to scare us. If that's what it takes for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, yes. Hey, when I got born again, that's what scared me. I was hell scared. But you know what? After that, I learned about Jesus and his love for me even more. How he paid the price for me. So if you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what we want to uh, encourage you to do is to accept him now. Romans 10, 9, 10 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart, that God have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, mouth, confession is made by your mouth. And what we want you to do today, what we are, are uh, just urging you to do today, is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Amen. So come on and give your life to Jesus Christ today. All you have to do is pray this prayer with me right now. Come on, pray along. The members here are going to pray along with you. Amen. And so bow your head so that you can just focus on what you're doing. And if somebody's out there and you sit next to somebody that's given their life to Jesus Christ, grab their hand and pray along with them. And pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you now as a sinner and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ died for my sins and on the third day I believe that you raised him from the dead I accept what Jesus Christ did for me and I accept him now as my Lord and my Savior because I believe this in my heart and I've confessed with my mouth I am now saved I am now born again thank you Lord Jesus thank you Heavenly Father for saving me Amen Hallelujah we are rejoicing with you today the Bible says that the angels in heaven are rejoicing they rejoice over one soul that comes to Christ Amen. So heaven is rejoicing because you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And what we want to do is get this booklet to you called The New Birth. It will help you in your walk with Christ. It will show you the next steps. And not only do we want this to get this book to you, but we want you to come and be a part of Abiding Faith Christian Center where you can grow in God, where you can learn the Word of God, where you can fellowship with the saints. And all you have to do to get this booklet is give us a call on 810-515-1286. That's 810-515-1286. Thank you so much for joining us today. Make that call so that we can get the booklet to you. And we just thank you for joining us again. And join us again at 11.30 a.m. for morning worship. If you're nearby, you can come to the 11 a.m. service in the building. We start at 11 a.m. but 11.30 a.m. on Facebook Live. God bless you, and we'll see you at 11.30.